Greetings once again to God's peculiar people. It's time for our monthly sermon. I'm Reverend Ron L. Spratley of Covenant of Grace Ministries. Today, we're going to continue uh, with our series on what we've been talking about. We started this particular series, we were talking about, if you remember, we started out with stewardship, okay, biblical economics and spiritual assets. We've completed the portion on stewardship and biblical economics. And last time we concentrated on spiritual assets, we're going to continue to talk about spiritual assets today. All right, last time I was up in the monthly sermon, I talked about your primary spiritual assets that were received at salvation. This is what we have available to us at salvation. A lot of born again Christians do not know about these assets. That's why we're teaching on them to bring you up to speed. So you'll know these things because of these difficult, difficult times that we're in, these perilous times, you can draw from and lean on and rely on these particular assets. All right, from our previous last sermon, we, I'm gonna do a quick review. We talked about the blood covenant, okay? The blood covenant is the contractual arrangement that brings us into union with Christ Jesus, Yeshua, our savior, through the shedding of his blood on the cross that we could come into covenant with God. We could be, all right, we could come into a reunion back with God, reconciliation back with God. So this covenant is the framework. Your faith need a framework to operate in. This blood covenant is the framework that you need. Remember when Abraham asked the Lord in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, he asked the Lord, how shall I know? How can I have confidence? How can I know? And that's when Yahweh cut a covenant with Abraham. All right, within this covenant, we have escrow blessings for time and eternity. Remember, this escrow is something that is held in an account, all right, until certain conditions are met, all right? We told you that Yeshua or Christ is the custodian or the agent over these escrow blessings. He releases these escrow blessings when you meet certain conditions of the covenant. When they are met in time and in eternity, these blessings can be released to you, okay? The third thing we talked about last time was election. We told you, you are a peculiar people. You've been selected. You've been chosen by God to be part of the royal family. All right? You've been adopted. You've been elected by God to be part of his family. This is good stuff. All right? You got to become elected to come into the family. Now, the family functions off of an honor code. This honor code requires us to live holy. Yes, holiness is very, very important. Holiness is God's way of living. You've been elected. You're part of the priesthood. He called us a holy nation. All right. These are 
the three spiritual assets we covered the last time we were up. Now, let me recap something. The reason these spiritual assets are so important, you need to understand assets help you solve problems. Assets are a resource that helps you solve problems. Okay? So this is really, really important because life is filled with problems and you need a way or you need the resources or you need the source and the resources in order to deal with the problems that we face in life so your needs can be met. That's why we're teaching on these spiritual assets so you can understand how relevant they are in the times that we're in. Now let's continue. Here's another asset that we're gonna to continue to build upon till we complete all of these primary spiritual assets. We're gonna complete these primary spiritual assets first, and then we're gonna have a sermon that's gonna deal with a second set of secondary assets. All right, but today we're going to finish the primary assets. Okay, number two, when you're in the kingdom of God, once you've been elected, you're in covenant, you have equal privileges and equal opportunity. Okay, equal privilege and equal opportunity. Okay, people talk about, in the world, we talk about we have equal opportunity commissions and all of these things, but I want to talk about equal privilege and equal opportunity in the kingdom of God. We start with scripture, Romans 3 and 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Please get a hold of that. For there is no respect of person with God. So you see the connection, equal opportunity, equal privilege. All right. All of his children have equal opportunity and equal privilege to advance. Okay. We're talking about after you've been elected, you have equal opportunity and equal privilege because there's no respect of person. Now, Let's look at Acts 10 and 34 because we build in doctrine around this particular point. So when we build doctrine, we're going to use more than one scripture. All right, in Acts 10 and 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. You see, we're building on this doctrine, all right? Let's talk about this one. The kingdom of God does not work the way the world's political system works. This is the problem that people work, they, they run into this problem in the kingdom of God because they think it works the way the world system works. It doesn't work that way. It's not a political system. There is no politics, all right? Not the politics that you're used to in the world. It doesn't exist in the kingdom, but people come into the kingdom wanting to play politics. Here's how the kingdom works. You must believe on Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. That is the first step. The sin debt is paid with the blood of Christ. You can't make a political contribution and buy your way in. You must have faith in the shed blood of Christ. That's why it's referred to as a blood covenant, which we cover. It is through that shed blood that you are redeemed. All right, with your money, your silver and your gold means nothing in the kingdom of heaven. You were redeemed 
and reconcile to Yahweh through the shed blood of Yeshua. All right, that's how the kingdom functions. Okay, so once you place your faith in this shed blood of Yeshua, you need to advance. And we're gonna talk about this today. You need to advance in the plan that God has set up for you. So many of my brothers and sisters don't wanna learn about the plan, don't wanna advance in the plan, but we're gonna be talking about the things we should be doing as part of the kingdom, being children of the most high. All right, so point number three for today, since we have this equal privilege and equal opportunity, we want to advance. So we want to understand additional concepts, additional assets, additional resources that we have to help us solve life's problems, to deal with life. So number three, we want to talk about predestination. And when we bring up predestination, we want to talk about foreknowledge. There's so much confusion around these topics and they're often, they're not taught correctly. So we want to deal with number three today, predestination and foreknowledge. And we're going to deal with these, my brothers and sisters together. All right, let's start with Ephesians 1 and 5. Having predestinated us, right? Okay, having predestinated us, having predetermined us to the adoption of children. So we're, we're adopted. The adoption of children that brings us into the kingdom of God. We're part of God's family. We place our faith in Christ. So the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, all right? It was, it was the adoption of children to himself, all right? How did it happen? Through Christ. That's the process of reconciliation. You cannot come to God unless you come through Christ. Got it? to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. This is God's sovereign will. He wanted to adopt us as children. He predetermined that, all right? He predestined that, all right? Before time ever existed. And we're gonna talk about some attributes of God with him being omniscient. God has never learned anything new. So you, you gotta understand that attribute of God. He already knows everything. He's not, he's not constrained by time. He's active in time, but he transcends time. Therefore, he has some attributes that humans don't understand. He knows everything before it even happens. All right? He predestined us to be part of his family, to be his children, according to the good pleasure of his will, his sovereign will. Now, like I said, some of these, we're going to build on doctrine on these concepts, so we're going to do more than one scripture to help everybody understand these concepts. We're gonna to go to Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow. Okay, we got two important concepts here I want you to understand. The first one we, we talked about having predestinated. This one we're talking about foreknow. So we're dealing with both of these concepts together. We're dealing with predestination and foreknowledge, all right? Let's go further. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate 
to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, God predetermined, let's break predestination and four dollars. Let's talk about these two scriptures and then we're going to go into some more detail. God predestinated to, he predestinated that he was going to adopt us as children through Christ before the beginning of time, according to his good will or his sovereign will. And then it comes on and says, he also foreknew, we're going to talk about that concept so you don't be confused, that once he predestinated us, that we were going to be conformed to the image of his son. That's why holiness is such an important aspect of being in the kingdom. I told you, when you elected in the kingdom, the kingdom has an honor code. That honor code includes living a holy life, all right? That, that's how that's why we are conformed to the image of his son. Christ never sinned, okay? We all have fallen short. All have sinned. All of us have sinned and fallen short. That's why we couldn't save ourselves. Christ, who was sinless, he was the sinless sacrifice that had to come to redeem us, right? That's why he had to come. Now, is being conformed to his image. You've heard me talk about this concept of post-salvation rehabilitation. Well, let me talk a little bit more about post-salvation rehabilitation. After you are saved and you confess your faith in Christ, you need to go through post-salvation rehabilitation. You still have a sin nature. Your sin nature still has to be dealt with. It still has to be brought under control. You are saved. But you notice once you got saved, you still had issues with this whole sin nature. All right, it was still there. It is part of your biological makeup. It's part of your body. And until you shed your flesh, it will still be there. Remember when Paul said, even when I try to do good, sin or evil is still there. Oh, what a wretched man. I am. Oh, yeah, but we're going to talk about some things that God has made available with these assets today that will help you constrain, help you manage, help you deal with your sin nature while you are here on earth. My friends, that's why the gospel is called good news. We have so many people trying to conform themselves to the image of Christ through self-effort. This is not a self-effort class. This is about conforming to what God has made available to you. You're trying to do the work when God wants to do the work. We're going to get into that. So the whole process, predestination and foreknowledge is about conforming us to the image of his son. All right, that he, Christ, was the firstborn of many brothers. So we got our big brother who is Christ and we are the rest of us who are born again, uh, born again, he wants to conform us to that same image. So Christ is our hero. 
Our big brother is our hero. That's who we should be conforming to. When you think about what am I supposed to be doing, look at Christ. Yeshua is your example of how you should be living. Let's move on. We deal with predestination, predestination, and for now. Let's get us a good working definition of predestination. God's predetermined plan. I want you to get this. He has a predetermined plan. You don't have to figure out what to do. He has a predetermined plan. He's revealed his plan in the Old and New Testament. He has a predetermined plan and provision. This is a plan and provision for you to execute the protocol plan of God. What is this, Pastor, this protocol plan of God? Protocol has to do with a system of requirements. Some people call it a system of rules, but the protocol plan is a system, all right, which reveals to you what to know, all right, what to know, how much to know, and how to apply it. That's what I want you to remember about this protocol plan. It's a system, it's a process. When you study the attributes of God, God deals in systems and processes. He has a procedural way of doing things. And that procedural way, that system and that process is laid out in the Bible. It's laid out in the scriptures. All right. One of our issues is we don't spend enough time in the scripture understanding the system and the process, okay? When you deal in systems, all right? Systems are a group of integrated parts that work together to make or create a whole. So we do parts of God's plan, but one of our problems is we haven't looked at, looked at the plan on a systematic integrated basis so we can understand the complete plan. And that's one of the things I'm doing my best to try and do to the people that are interested is teaching on this protocol plan of God. Now, the reality is this, I know that in the environment that we're in, there are a lot of people that are not interested in learning about God. So that's the choice they've made with their free will. And I respect the free will of other people. I may not always agree with their choices, but I respect their choices because God gave all of us the free will to choose, all right? So I have chose, I am going to continue to preach and teach on the protocol plan of God so that if there are people out there that are interested, they can understand the system, they can understand the requirements, they can understand the plan as it is laid out in the scripture. God has provided everything you need to receive his highest and best. That's good news, brothers. Sisters, that's good news. But how are you allocating your time to learn about the provision that he made for you? See, one of the things is some of us just are way too busy doing everything except the things of God. I want you to look at, again, how you have allocated your time. You heard me preach on misallocated time and misallocated priorities. And in the age that we're in now, 
with this massive, massive deception that's taking place with this white horse. Yes, the white horse of deception. So many of the kingdom children, so many are being deceived away from the word. Learn about what Yeshua left for you when he was crucified on that cross. But when he rose again and went to heaven, he left you spiritual assets. Let me move on. Predestination. Now, let's talk about foreknowledge. Foreknowledge is the all-knowing nature of God, whereby, check this out, he knows reality before it exists. This is why you want to be in relationship with God. He's omniscient. He knows reality before it even exists. Get a hold of this. Yahweh knows all things, all events, all people before they exist. Yeah, that's deep revelation. That's why you want to be in a relationship with Yahweh. That's why you want to believe on Christ, Yeshua. This is a pretty powerful source to have on your team. Matter of fact, this is the person you need heading your team. All right? Now, here's what we got to understand. God's sovereignty, his good pleasure, his will, he has absolute supreme authority and power. You've heard me preaching on, my last soundbite was about authority and power. God is sovereignty. He has a sovereign will. He has absolute supreme power and authority, all right? So God's sovereignty and protocol plan, we just talked about the protocol plan is the system of requirements that he's laid out for us. One of them being holy living, that's just one of them. And man's free will must coexist together. Man, must conform to God's will. There's the problem. In a nutshell, you cannot get access to these spiritual assets, all right? Because remember I said escrow. Escrow means there are conditions that have to be met before the blessing is released. One of those conditions, you have a free will but your free will, if you're going to function in the kingdom of God, your free will must conform to God's sovereign will. Got it? This is a circuit breaker. Remember Christ, when he was about to go to the cross, he prayed to the Father and he asked, can't this cup pass from me? In other words, do I have to go to this cross? And, and he got an answer because he said after he asked that question, I know he got an answer because he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He conformed 
to the will of the Father. In, the, in our prayers, we said, what do we say? What do we constantly pray about? Do we mean it? We got to ask ourselves, thy, what do we pray? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Conformance to the kingdom way. Conformance to the Father's way. The problem we have today, everybody wants to do their own thing. Okay, let me move on. So we've talked about predestination and foreknowledge. We've talked about equal privilege and opportunity. And now I want to introduce the divine power system. Christ, when he walked the earth, Christ functioned in the divine power system. How did he do all the things that he did? He was able to do these things because he understood the divine power system that was available to him as an asset and he utilized it. You can have assets that you don't even know about. These are invisible assets. Invisible assets manage physical assets. We're so busy looking at, and physical assets are important. These are the assets that God gave us, all right, that we look around and we can visibly see what he created, the land, the ocean, the trees, okay? The oil, the gas, the minerals. We can see all of those things, all right? Those are creative assets or natural resources that we can see. But the assets I'm talking about today are invisible. These invisible assets are in your soul. They're in your spirit. So Christ knew how to tap in to this divine power system to use the resources, even though they were invisible because they're spiritual, that God provided to him within the plan to function while he was on the earth. So let's talk about this. Second Peter, one and three, according to his divine power, you're gonna hear me talking a lot about this concept of divine power. According, all right, as his divine power has given to us, had given, past ten, had given to us all things that pertain unto what, life, He's given us all things that pertain into life and godliness. He has given us all these things, but some of us are too slowful to even sit down and study these things so you can understand them. Remember, in the plan, the protocol plan, I talked about what to know. I talked about how much to know, I talked about how to apply what we know. That's why we can't get into the plan, study to show yourself approved. Now, some of you say, well, I, I, when I read it, I can't understand it. Well, that's why Pastor Williams and I are out here preaching every day. Come to the site. This is a way you can study also, get help. All things that pertain to life and godliness, how? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to what? Glory and 
virtue. Remember, we talked about election. On the election, you were called. On the election, you were chosen. You were called to what? You were called to that honor code. All right. How do we get understanding? He's telling us through the knowledge. I got to learn about Yeshua. I got to learn about Yahweh. How do I do that? By getting in a teaching ministry. Somebody's going to teach you and not play on your emotions. They're going to teach you the truth. That's what you got to have. Now, let's talk about this divine power. This divine power, this is how it functions. Your willingness to use God's ability. Yeah, you remember the song, the song, remember the song? He's able. God is able. He's able, but do you have a willingness to use God's ability? Or are you still out here trying to function on your own self-effort? That's why you can't come into his rest. What did he tell us? Come unto me, all that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So many of my people are laboring. So many of my people have a heavy burden on them. I want to share the divine power system with you. Your effort is based around learning about God's protocol, plan, and system. That's your job, to learn about his way of doing things. All right? So it's your willingness to use God's ability supplied to you by the Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit supplies you this ability. God's spirit dwells in you. Power is released through understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. God's ability is supplied to you by the Holy Spirit. And this gives you the ability to walk in God's protocol plan for your life. God has a predetermined plan for you. So many Christians are not walking in the plan. Yeah, you're born again, and you might be attending church services, but are you walking in the plan? Do you know the plan? You can't walk in what you don't know. It is a system. It is a process. What to know, how much to know, how to apply what you know. That power comes through the spirit. Okay? Acts 1 and 18. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the othermost parts of the world. Remember, Christ told his disciples, tarry here, wait here, 
until the spirit comes upon you. Our challenge is, and our issue is, we've got so many people trying to do the Great Commission and they're not under the divine power system. They haven't tarried. They haven't waited until the spirit has come upon them. See the problem? That's why we're not as effective as we should be because too many, too many are trying to do this based on self-effort. When this divine power comes, it will help you constrain and manage and control your sin nature until you get to heaven. Okay? Now I've got another scripture I wanna leave you with. It's a very, very short scripture. First Thessalonians 5 and 19. Quench not the spirit. The spirit oftentimes in the Bible is referred to as a fire. Don't quench. When you quench the fire, you put it out. So we can because we have a free will. Let me break something down to you. You can resist the spirit. Not a good thing, because when you resist the spirit, you're shedding down divine power. All right? You can grieve the spirit. When you grieve the spirit, you're shedding down divine power. And when you quench the spirit, you completely, like a circuit breaker, you completely shut the power off. How do I do that, Pastor? Because of stubbornness with my own free will, wanting to do things my way instead of conforming to God's way of doing things. Let's wrap up. Let's wrap up church. We're gonna recap the primary assets received at salvation. <clears throat> A, the blood covenant. B, escrow blessings for time and eternity. C, election. D, equal privilege and equal opportunity, what we just covered today. <clears throat> e, predestination and foreknowledge. And finally, divine power. These are the primary assets that we have available to us that we receive at salvation. I wanted to cover these because these are foundational. And next we're gonna be moving to the secondary assets that we can put to work when we mature as Christians. If you've been blessed by this message and would like to donate to the ministry, please feel free to plant a seed via Cash App, Dallas, COG, Tennessee, one, two, three, or you can mail us at 1705 Ghost Creek Drive, Collierville, Tennessee, 38017. We'd like you to subscribe to our channel. A lot of our listeners, almost half of our listeners have not subscribed to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. 
So whenever we post something, we will notify you. You'll get a notification. In these times we live in right now, when God has a word that he wants to get to you, you need to make sure that you get a hold of it and you're being, not being bombarded by all of this stuff that the world is putting out. The world is putting out a lot of deception. You need the truth. And finally, I, I want to thank all of the people who have continued to support us. We appreciate what you do. When you support us, you are obeying what Christ has commanded. He has commanded that you support those who preach the gospel truth. All right? Through that, you will be blessed. We want to get the blessing on you. So we send the word of God out to you. So through your support, you're ensuring that this channel continues to function and we continue to preach the gospel. Again, I want to thank Pastor Williams for the fantastic and wonderful job that he's been doing. I'm so excited about what he's doing and us as a team, both of us working together as a team. All right, I'm going to close out now. God bless you. We have a chance to come to you once again.